I am back. This is your man Warrior, and this was a special request for Sunfac for a review. So um, I do love my Sunfac, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that do not have him. So you may see this character review as useless, but I will tell you: a, it's good to know your opponents. So if your opponent has Sunfac, you'll want to know the ins and outs of why they're using Sunfac, and then also while he's currently a chromium exclusive he will not always be that way every character comes out initially um, uh, that, that's chromium exclusive will live there for a little while give character uh, individuals who want to get him early the opportunity to and then after that they'll move him somewhere like a cantina battle or whatnot just like they did three other characters today so uh, first, Sunfac is obviously located on the dark side. He's not a light side character, he's a dark side character. So he's a great addition to the dark side, who I feel like there is more light side characters that are quality than dark side characters that are quality. Uh, it just feels like they've created better toolkits for them, and that's why everybody loves Emperor Palpatine so much, is he's a dark side character that actually is worth his weight in gold. Um, he's a Genosian, and he is a tank. And then, of course, they've added the tag Separatist, and that will be for down the road when they decide to do something with that. Um, the highest that he can be geared is gear 10 currently. He can't go to gear 11, and you can see he's got all these little question mark gears, which means that they have not chosen to make him any stronger currently, but if they chose to, those would be where they add the additional gears. His current power for me is 8557, and that is um, that is actually my most powerful character. If you look at all my characters, he is on the top left. He is the most powerful character that I have, even higher than fives. Now, I actually dropped his power down um, by a little bit just recently because I re worked his mods and I'm hoping that his mods will work better now that I've had that I have them reworked um, so we're going to do everything from the mods the attacks abilities his overall stats um, and then we'll see him in action um, I was hoping to find a team that has two tanks uh, to show you how effective he is against two tanks but so the primary reason why someone would want Sunfac okay first he is one of the most powerful characters in the game as far as overall power and he is arguably everybody's going to argue with me online but he's arguably the best tank in the game now i'll explain why i feel like he is the best tank and i'll go over his abilities so first let's just go to his stats now he is obviously a tank so his strength is going to be the highest he's over 1100 in in um, increasing physical damage health and armor through strength and then he's average on agility and, and intelligence um for health and protection i do not have his health boosted anymore i used to have his health boosted very high um, and I used to have him at like 76,000 between the two, both health and protection. And he was my beefiest tank. Um, he's actually not my beefiest tank right now. He's he's just under my fives. My my fives has got a little bit more health and protection. Um, but that's because I reworked his mods and I, I found other stats that were more important for him than just the health mods. Uh, so his overall health is 27,600, and that's only boosted 2,200 by the mods. His protection, I was able to get quite a decent boost. It was about 30,000. It's now 40,000. That is a lot of protection that you're going to have to work through. So he's still really close to almost 70,000 uh, for a character who's a tank. That is that is still a lot to have to deal with. Now, <clears throat> you'll know why I reworked his mods is speed. If you look, I've got speed up 64. He's got an okay starting speed over 100, but... You really want Sunfac as fast as possible, uh, and the reason for that is you want him to be able to get out there and taunt right away. Because he is such a sponge, you want him to take on all of the damage that the other team's going to provide. The other thing I noticed is it does change if he taunts first how the AI on the other side, how the computer, the RNG and stuff, how they how it plays out. Um, I've noticed that when he was slower. Um, that the game would automatically pick certain abilities, and now that he taunts, the game picks different abilities. And so it feels like um, having him faster is, is beneficial. Now, um, again, that remains to be seen. I have to play a few more battles to see. I just recently reworked his speed. 
Um, but having his speed up high is also important because I built a character set team, right? In my arena, I've got a, a team. And I you want your team to go in an order so that way as they start to do their abilities, the next player in line will benefit from that ability. So you create a, a speed list, if you will, of your characters. And I wanted my Sunfac faster than my Admiral Akbar. So if you look, his speed's 173. And if you come back here, my Admiral Akbar speed is 167. So I've got about six speed over my Admiral Akbar. And that's good. That's where I want him. I want him to go before Admiral Akbar. Because if Admiral Akbar goes first, he will do his ability that gives another player on the team an extra turn by using a non-basic ability. And of course, he'll use his taunt, <clears throat> and then he'll get to shoot his basic. And his basic sucks. I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but it's not what I'm looking for uh, with Admiral Akbar. What I'm looking for with Admiral Akbar is I'm looking for, you know, Ray to smack five times, you know, with her, her, her triple hit and her double hit, or, or I can rework the mods and have Lando be able to go after Admiral Akbar. And that's currently what I have set up now where Lando can go on his special and then he can go immediately again on his special if he gets two crits. And so it's really cool um, with the way that I have Lando modded that if uh, I have my Admiral Akbar speed where I have it and then I have Lando just next in line to go, what happens is they end up allowing Lando to go twice and his AOE does 100% more the second time. So the Admiral Akbar Lando combo is pretty cool. I have that. I'm trying to work out all the kinks and whatnot in that connection. So my team today was is going to probably have Ray in it. But again, I have Sunfax speed specifically worked. That's very difficult once you start trying to figure out your team speeds, what they need to be and trying to figure out what, with what mods you have, how to modify their speeds and get them in an order that makes sense. Um, so this was difficult. And again, what it, what it overall did was just kind of screwed Sunfax overall health. I had to pull some mods that I really liked, but they were not giving him the correct speed that I needed for him to go first before um, Admiral Akbar. Now his, um, he, he is, uh, a Genosian, and they do tend to hit decently. Um, and so I wanted to make sure, you know, it's pretty, pretty decent. It's a average to a little over average on, on a hit. Um, but I wanted his critical damage to be greater. And, and this is why he's a tank, but he also retaliates, you know, he has a counter chance. And so, you know, he's going to counter quite a bit. And every time he counters, I want the, to get the most bang for my buck, you know, if you will, when he hits them. So I've got his critical damage up 36, which is excellent. So he's at 186 critical damage. Now, potency and tenacity are a big deal because potency is the ability to apply detrimental effects and he on his basic can dispel. Uh, and so you want, and he can also do critical chance down. And so what you want is you want him to be able to apply those effects to the other team and of course, the higher the potency, the more likely you are to do those negative status effects to the other team. Tenacity, of course, is the resistance of those negative status effects. And with people running Emperor Palpatine or um, Dooku with ability block, or maybe they're running Obi-Wan and he does ability block, you want your characters to resist those negative status effects. And so a tenacity really should be probably over 50 or 60, but I have noticed even with some of my characters where their tenacity is over 80, that it's still not working <laughs> to resist some of those negative status effects. So I don't know if tenacity is broken in the game or what, um, but he definitely, uh, tenacity definitely isn't working as well as it should. But anyway, I have it almost to 50, so it's, it's decent. Um, and then, of course, he has health steal. Not every character has it, but a lot do. His health steal is as good as IG-88. I know a lot of people love IG-88 because he gains life every time he, he hits. Well, health, Sunfax health steal is the same, 15%. So when he deals damage, of course, and this is why you want his critical damage up. So when he does a crit and does a ton of damage... He gets 15% of that back every single time. He always gets health uh, health steal. It's just an automatic triggered health ability that, that gains life. So a tank that's very tanky that gains life naturally in his basic attacks, this is 
excellent um, as far as tanks go. Um, most uh, I don't actually don't know of another tank that has a 15% health steal or, or greater. So that is awesome. For his physical offense, his physical damage is, like I said, it's not super high, not super low. It's, you know, normally around the 2000 mark, but then I boosted it a little. And then his physical critical chance, I was able to get his critical chance up a little bit from 23 to 27. Um, so about a third of the time. And then his armor is pretty dang good. It's um, normally around uh, 33-ish, and so I've got it up to about 40%. 40%'s not bad at all for armor. He's not the highest armor rated character. I know that Fives has a higher natural armor rating, and there are some other characters as well. But this is gonna reduce the damage um, taken from the physical damage. So any ability a character has where it says deal physical damage, this reduces that physical damage by this, this percent. So pretty awesome. He has a small dodge chance, and he'll have, of course, um, a small deflection chance, 2%. So, and then for special offense, um, these are special abilities. He's going to do slightly less damage, not 2200, but 1680. Um, his crit special critical chances is low again at only about 15%. Uh, for special survivability, this is uh, a unique section that a lot of people don't pay attention, but um, he does have a, a decent re resistance at over 20%. And a, a deflection, which is evading, um, and then his special critical avoidance. I don't have a critical avoidance mod on him, so <clears throat> it's at zero. But Sunfac, all in all, is a very good character. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to go through first the mods and how and why I did the mods. So let's go to manage. So you'll notice I have three set bonuses. That was um, obviously if you can get set bonuses, you want as many set bonuses as possible. So one was overall just plus 5% defense, which affects all defensive stats. One is the tenacity. Again, he was a little bit low on tenacity, so I needed that 10% tenacity boost as, it's as best as I could get. Um, and then, of course, um, I was using health mods originally, and a couple health mods I have on here are awesome. So I'm getting a 5% health bonus. Not a huge health bonus, and it's not as high as it was. I did have about 15% health earlier on him. Um, so let's go ahead and go through. Of course, this top left uh, transmitter, the defense transmitter, is always going to be offense. So I've got him a 5-dot offense mod. gives him the f almost 6% offense. Now, the one thing that it does give him is a 4.2% critical chance, uh, the 38 offense, and then 15 speed. That's a pretty good secondary stat setup, um, if you ask me. The 15 speed's not bad at all. The four, over 4% 4 critical chance is not bad at all. So this is a great defense transmitter uh, to place in here. And again, your primary stat's always going to be offense here. And the next one's pretty simple. Again, it's the processor, and it's always going to be defense. Now, Unfortunately, I have other 5-dot mods to the left that are better for him except for speed. And I needed him faster than my Admiral Akbar because of the abilities. So this one has 11 speed as a secondary stat. And so I actually had to go down on the mod to a 4-dot so that way I could get that speed. And I know there's a lot of people that say, you know... One, three, and five dot mods are better than the two and four dot mods because two and four aren't that much better and they're more expensive to burn. And I mean, if that's your theory, then that's fine. But I have a lot of four dot mods that have rolled, you know, random, just like any other mod, have rolled random good secondary stats. And this happens to be one of those four dot mods that had speed on there. And I went ahead and rolled it to see where it would go. And I got it up to 11 speed. That's awesome. So it adds 11 speed. Again, Sunfac is not very fast, especially compared to my team. And so I really needed that secondary stat of speed, but his defense is plus eight. Uh, so this one, again, your primary stat's only ever going to be defense, but I was looking at the secondary stats, which is what you should be doing on these. And then the bottom left, the data bus, um, I've got a five dot tenacity mod and it's 23.5% protection. It's either going to be health or protection and protection is a much bigger percent. You know, if you go to um, health, you only get 5.88% health and um, that is not as cool as the 23.5% protection. In addition, again, this had a secondary stat of plus eight speed. Eight speed, again, is really pretty good. Um, I've got a couple of really nice mods um, that I have have gotten over the last you know month and a half, 
and uh, I just reworked most of my mods on my characters to try to make them to what they should be. And it's really difficult when you've modded up, you know, 20 characters to desire to pull them all off and start all over. But that's what I did uh, yesterday. So that way my team would be modded efficiently and the way, so that way I'm not telling people how to do it and then not doing it the correct way myself. So anyway, the 23% protection is great. The eight speeds, awesome. Um, and again, this one's either going to be health or protection on this bottom left. And I chose protection because he's a tank and I really want that. I wanted that 23.5% um, protection. Top right, uh, the tenacity receiver. I needed to make a, a set bonus and I happened to have a plus 30 speed receiver. Now I could have done this um, with accuracy. Uh, to prevent, you know, to try and overcome the dodging and things like that. And uh, I could have done uh, other other primary stats in here, but I chose speed. Again, I was trying to get him up there in speed, and a 5-dot mod with uh, 30 speed is great. It also added more protection, and I gave him both a percentage bonus in protection and then just an overall total 440 protection. The secondary stats on here are actually pretty junk um, but the 30 speed 5 dot tenacity was a great mod to give me my set bonus and the last two were both health mods I didn't have any other really cool mods to give set bonuses so I went ahead and did health plus he was already a little weak on health I'd I'd lowered by removing all those other health mods his health down so this one's either gonna be critical chance or critical damage is the choices that I always give myself on this so I took a five dot health mod that had a primary of critical damage again I want to max out the damage he does because he has a 15 percent health steal which is awesome and then of course it had tenacity a couple percentage points and then it had some more protection again the secondary stats on here are not amazing but they're not horrible more protection more tenacity and then of course the 36 percent critical damage which gives him a greater punch when he hits you and then of course the multiplexer on the bottom right um, he's going to lay down some negative status effects so you want his potency up so this is either going to be where you pick your tenacity Re, uh, multiplexer or your your potency multiplexer and you know he was weak on tenacity but Honestly, I really want him to do his negative status effects to the opposing team because he does critical chance down and critical chance down means they're not going to do critical damage as often, which creates an increased survivability for all of my characters on my side. And that's super important. So I did potency in this slot. So he's modded correctly with my mods. This is as good as it's going to get for now. Um, and I feel like the set bonuses do him justice. Now that you know the mods and which ones I picked and why, and you can see his gearing, <clears throat> and you got to see his basic stats. And of course, I do have him 7-star level 80, so this is him at max. Let's go ahead and go through attacks and abilities. First one is called Browbeat. This is his basic. This is the number one reason why, in my opinion, he is the best tank. So I do not have any of these omega meaning this, this gold material, which, by the way, we got a free one just recently uh, through that whole fiasco where the servers were down for like four or five hours. Uh, but browbeat is definitely one of those things that um, really ticks people off when they're playing against him because he this is his basic and he counters. And so he's going to hit you with this and he's going to hit you with this a lot. So it deals physical damage to target enemy and it dispels all positive status effects on them. That includes a taunt. Then Sunfac recovers... 15% of his max health if any effects were dispelled this way. Now, almost every tank I go, or almost every team I go against, they have positive status effects. They're boosting their team up. They're, they're good to do so. And, of course, most teams build teams that do that. You know, they want their teams to be as strong as possible, so they have characters that are giving buffs to their team. In his basic retaliatory shot, he's going to take all of those positive status effects away, and gain life. So not only does he have a health steal when he hits on his basic, which gains life, but he also recovers 15% of his max health if he dispels any effects, which almost always occurs. So this is, uh, Browbeat is just an amazing hit. And he hits not as hard as like Genosian Soldier, but he hits harder than probably, you know, 60 of the characters in the game. So he's not super powerful on his basic but it's also not horrible and with him boosted up a little bit and his ability to crit often 
you know, he can get double damage quite a bit on my team. So this is excellent. Now, I want to talk on Browbeat for just a second and compare it to the other two characters in the game that I'm aware of that can dispel. I'm sure there's more than just two dispellers uh, other than him, but, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn is kind of the guy. He's the go-to person. You can farm him easy. And he has got a dispel ability. So if you go back to Qui-Gon Jinn and then Tebow, of course. And so he's got Humbling Blow. It says it deals special damage and it removes all positive status effects. That includes the taunt. He can use this once every three turns. Then you have Tebow, of course. And again, he's got the same thing. He's got called Bring Low, which can be done every four times, which is dealing that unavoidable damage and remove all positive status effects. And so his is every four turns. T uh, Qui-Gon is a little better at every three turns on Humbling Blow. And so this is why you're going to see Qui-Gon Jinn in the arena with a lot of teams. Even some of the highest end teams still use him. Now, I know in the newest meta or the newest uh, character sets that people are using on some of the highest end servers that were around since the very beginning of the game, they are not using Qui-Gon for the most part, and the reason is they've gone to an AoE-based team, and AoE damage doesn't discriminate. It really doesn't care whether you have tanks or not. It's a moot point. You don't need a Dispeller uh, with their set, but for the majority of us who are playing, we still need the ability to get through their tanks, and so this is why Qui-Gon's awesome. Now, this is where we run into trouble with Qui-Gon Jinn or with Tebow. What happens is, because you only get three turns, every three turns to use this, what happens is they people know this, so they build a double tank system. So they have two tanks, and they'll probably use Royal Guard and Stormtrooper Han, or Royal Guard and Chewie. <laughs> and so what happens is they've got a Ray who does a lot of damage, and she's going to jack up your world. And she's going to do a lot of damage, and you want to kill her. So you go into an arena battle, and the first thing you do is try and kill her. She gets down into the yellow, you don't finish her off, and all of a sudden Royal Guard taunts. So now you've got to deal with a 60, 70, 80,000 power or, you know, health and protection Royal Guard. So you start working on him and you, you, you dispel it because you've got Qui-Gon Jinn or you've got Tebow. Now you can go back to your Ray, but the moment you go back to Ray, then there are other tank taunts. And now you can't dispel that second taunt. And so you're stuck having to go after a tank that's got 60 or 70,000 and kill it before you could even go back to Ray. And in the meantime, Ray's, you know, slowly gaining life and they may have a healer. Maybe they've got someone that gain, gives them life. And all of a sudden she's back out of the yellow. And by the time you kill that tank, Ray's killed two or three of your characters. This is exactly why a double tank setup with Ray is awesome. Um, however, that is a thing of the past if you can get Sunfac. Sunfac does not discriminate. He's got Browbeat. He also retaliates. Um, he's got a counter chance of 65%. We'll talk about that in a second. And so what happens is basically they're hitting him because he's taunted. And he's shooting his basic. And he can shoot at anybody and take away Dispel on his basic. So it's just his basic. He doesn't have a cooldown. He can do this every single turn. And if he's really fast, he has turns that come around a little faster than other characters. And so he's going to dispel those tanks. So whether they have one tank, two tank, ten tanks, well, they can't legally have that. There's only five characters. But it doesn't matter. I actually, in Galactic War, went against a five-tank team. They had uh, Obi-Wan as the leader. And then they had four tanks. They had fives. They had Sunfac. Um, they had Royal Guard and they had Chewie. And I'd never seen that before. And I don't know how well he's doing in his own arena on his server, but I saw five tanks because uh, Obi-Wan is technically a tank, even though he's a non-taunting tank. And I immediately thought, oh, I'm going to put Sunfeck in. I, he was my last battle on Galactic War, and I think it was his power uh, was just super high because of the tanks, but he was a walkthrough. It was extremely easy to get through those tanks because of Sunfac, because I could just simply dispel their taunting capabilities with his basic. So the next one down from Browbeat is Subjugate. Subjugate, I have not. Omega again, you can increase his offense down duration, but his taunt is the average. It's two turns, so he'll taunt for two turns, and he inflicts offense down on the target enemy. Now, he's trying to inflict that negative status effect onto the enemy. So this is why you want his potency up. And then it says, with a 55% chance to also remove 
40% turn meter. So he it does have a little bit of turn meter manipulation. So if you have another character across the way that you want them to do less damage and you want to take away part of their turn or remove some of their turn meter, you can just target them, do subjugate. He's going to more than likely have offense down applied and remove some of their turn meter, which is really nice. And again, the offense down is for one turn, but you can make it offense down for two turns by Omega-ing his ability. Now, his taunt is average. It's not what makes him amazing. Browbeat is what makes him amazing. Um, and remember, his browbeat, he can gain life if he actually takes away any of those positive status effects. Now, Spiteful Strike is similar to browbeat, except for it has a cooldown of four. It will deal, this is very cool, and by the way, Omega-ing, it will give you plus 15% damage. And when you really want him to increase his damage, because then you gain more health. But he deals physical damage to an enemy, and he recovers... 25% of his max health if the target has any negative status effects. So while our team is inflicting negative status effects and he is inflicting negative status effects on them, more than likely once you do a spiteful strike, they will have negative status effects on them through your team and through what they're doing to the other team. And so he's going to be able to gain 25% of his max health, which is like 6,000 um, for my particular character. And that's a 6,000 health gain. That is like um, having a healer. And so when he gets health steal on his basics, he gains health on his basic if he dispels. And on this one, he gains health if they have negative status effects, which he's trying to apply on his basic. This is a really powerful and potent combination because he's a great, probably one of the best self-healing tanks in the game. So Spiteful Strike is pretty awesome. And then Superiority, this is his unique, it just happens. Sunfac, it, this is maxed out. Sunfac has a 50% counter chance. In addition, whenever he attacks outside of his turn, so this is every time he counters, or if he's called out a turn uh, with Admiral Akbar's ability and whatnot, he deals 15% more damage and inflicts critical chance down for two turns. Now this critical chance down for two turns is important because this is what makes the other team not crit. And you want their other team not hitting you with criticals. So a 50% counter chance is not as good as some other characters on the counters, but it's gonna happen 50% of the time. So if he taunts and their team, all five hit him, you know, two or three of those characters statistically are gonna end up getting hit with his shot, which will deal more damage than his basic. And it's his basic attack, so it causes him to have a health steal, and it inflicts critical chance down for, to them, <clears throat> and it will dispel any positive status effects. So superiority combined with his browbeat are absolutely insane because it just gives him the ability as people are whacking him to dispel the tank on the other side. Every time they hit your tank, it allows for the dispelling of their tanks that they have on their side. So with him, tanks are kind of a thing of the past. You really can't have any good tank setup if the other person has a sun fact. So what you've got to do is, is have multiple dispellers on your team if they have multiple tanks or have Sunfac. So this is Sunfac. He is awesome. I love his attacks and abilities. I do want to show you him in action. So I want to go ahead and go to the squad arena. And I want to go and fight somebody that has uh, Obi-Wan because of the dodge. I want to show you the dodge uh, ability. So I've got a two tank setup. One taunts, one does not. I've got fives in here. And I did put back my my Ray. I'm um, having a little bit of fun with her today. I reworked her mods, so I'm looking for some high damage just to see. Um, I have been using Lando, but ever since I switched to Lando, I've been getting bumped out of the first spot. I don't think I have his mods set quite right. Um, but so I wanted to go through and fight Obi-Wan because Obi-Wan's evasion is 15%. Now, it didn't used to work very well, and so they kind of reworked him, and they said now he... Oh, someone's engaged in that person in a battle. But now Obi-Wan works almost too good. Um, so I guess I'll just do the person in the number two slot. But Obi-Wan's, I guess I won't show you how Obi-Wan's work. Oh, and your opponent's already engaged in a battle. Wow, everybody on my server is active, <laughs> which is good. And let's look at uh, Simeon now, uh, or Simon. Simon uh, Phoenix has got the Emperor, and the Emperor is pretty amazing. 
Let's go ahead and try it with the Emperor. I will tell you, Obi-Wan works better than he should right now, which is not at the end of the world, but that's... Still, they reworked him and made him better than he should be because I get, when I fight against Obi-Wan, I get like six or seven dodged hits before I even get a landed hit, and it's only 15% evasion, so it should only evade one out of seven times. So let's go ahead and work on Rey. Of course, she's the one that does the most damage. Let's go ahead and take her out. And then let's give an extra turn to one of my characters. And, you know, Emperor's amazing. You're going to watch this. He's going to get stuns on. Three out of uh, the five, which is great. But he's very squishy. And, of course, I'm going to go ahead and do... I could do my taunt, but instead I'm going to do my basic browbeat. Now watch. He just taunted. I can't do anything else but attack him. But you notice he's one of the few that resisted the stun. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot browbeat, and boom. His status effects are gone. So now I'm going to come back over to Emperor Palpatine, and I'm going to do a double whack. And he's gone. 22,000 on that hit. Now I'm going to go ahead, and I want to do offense down. The heaviest hitter is probably the Genosian Soldier, so I'm going to taunt. And it reduced his uh, physical damage. And, of course, there was a retaliation. He did not, on his retaliation, get critical chance down, but that is a a possibility most of the time, 50% of the time. Now I'm going to clear that shock status effect and give Leia an extra turn. And let's finish him off. Oh, that was a weak hit by Ray. <laughs> let's go ahead and do the double hit. That's one thing I like about Fives. He calls an assist just like Genosian Soldier. And when I pulled Genosian Soldier out of my team, Fives was who I replaced him with because Fives is an awesome tank. Let's do a basic. And again, they have to hit. Now look, there you go. Critical chance, 25% critical chance, negative 25%. So that is awesome. That was just on his retaliatory basic. He hit Sunfac, Sunfac retaliated and gave him negative uh, critical chance. And wow, my Ray is not hitting very hit hard today. Um, now, nobody's really messed up, and so the, the third one, this ability, Spiteful Strike, is really stupid. It's to, um, if they have negative status effects, he gains health, and they don't have status effects, and they don't gain health, or there's no reason to gain health, Sun Facts in perfect shape. So I'm going to go ahead and do his basic. Did get speed down. I'll go ahead and do a triple hit, and then I'll give him extra turn, and it's, worthless he went ahead and shot so there's my team there's Sunfac. you can see him in action he's amazing i have talked to some of the people on my shard or on my server and they said if it wasn't for Sunfac, they'd beat me probably 50 60 percent of the time when they attempt to fight me but that it takes multiple attempts to beat me and push me out of that first place spot because of Sunfac. they said he is truly the worst opponent that they have to go against on my team that everybody else is doable, manageable, but it is Sun Fact that gives them the nightmare. So I recommend if you have Sun Fact, develop him. If you do not have Sun Fact, just be patient. He will come out from the Chromium exclusive and be available somewhere in the game sometime soon. And if you're going to spend a little bit of money on Chromium packs and you're going to unlock him that way, then so be it. Uh, but I would give him an overall rating of amazing as I would say he's the number one tank in the game. Again, that's my opinion, but I would say he's the absolute best tank in the game. If you're going to use a tank, he is the tank to use. He's amazing. And I would say that um, out of a 10 out of 10, you know, he definitely scores a 10 out of 10 every single time. So I would definitely highly recommend Sunfact. Now, as always, if you like the video, like it, subscribe, you leave comments down below. I will try to make videos of what you guys are suggesting. I am now starting to get more suggestions than I'm capable of making. I am making a list though, and I do want to make all these character reviews. I know the character reviews are probably the most sought after, and so I will continue to try and do these character reviews as much as possible. And as always, have fun today. Keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.